So in this class, we are going to demonstrate how Spring transactions work using the declarative configuration of the Spring context. So I have an interface here called Transaction Test Service. Okay, it's in this file called Transaction Test Service Java. It has four methods. You can look at the Java docs of each of those four methods. The first one it just finds a customer by the customer ID. The second one, it adds a customer in the happy path scenario and there is no exception thrown. So you pass a customer object to it and it inserts that customer into the database and it will and it'll commit, commit that customer into the database. And the third method here, it throws an expected ex exception so this is an exception that would be expected and we configure Spring to commit the transaction when this expected ex exception is thrown. And the last case is you are trying to add a customer and you receive an unexpected exception. In this case the transaction should get rolled back and we have to configure your Spring transaction management to roll back when this unexpected exception happens. So let's look at a demo program which utilizes these four methods. It's called as XML transaction demo. And we have a class here called XML transaction test service which implements the interface that we just discussed. So this class implements those four methods. And if you see in this class, all we are trying to do here is uh, it this class implements the transaction test service in, interface which has four methods so it has to provide the implementations for for those four methods which are add customer without any exception add customer that throws expected excep exception and add customer that throws unexpected exception and the last one is find customer by id and here in this service we don't have any much business logic all we do is we delegate the persistence logic to the DAO. Persistence is saving and retrieving things from the database. So we try to simulate a business logic where some exceptions are thrown. In one case we throw an expected exception and in another case we throw an unexpected exception. So Spring will be configured to commit when the expected exception is thrown and there is no configuration required when an unexpected exception is thrown. Spring will automatically roll back the transaction if an unexpected exception is thrown. Only in the case of expected exception you have to specify explicitly that Spring will commit the transaction when that exception is thrown. For unexpected exceptions there is you don't need any special configuration. So let's take a quick look at the Spring context XML file which is so if you open the demo program, you see that the first thing that happens is the Spring Context XML file is loaded from the class path. And the Spring Context XML file is XML test.xml. So let's open that. And if you go and see in, in that program, first thing it does is it imports the transaction test.xml in which you actually specify the data source and the Spring Transaction Manager and here the transaction advice is a place where you configure the transaction attributes for all those four methods that we just discussed. So the find method it doesn't need any transaction attributes so you just say read only is true whereas the method which says add customer that throws expected exception you explicitly specify that there is no rollback for the expected exception and all these three methods add customer that throws expected exception that throws unexpected exception and without any exception all of them if you see there is a propagation attribute which is a transaction propagation attribute and it will always start a new transaction requires new means it will always start a new transaction and if you see here there are different kinds of values for the transaction propagation. 
you see other ones like required, supports, mandatory, and requires new. I'll quickly explain all, what all this all these mean. Requires new means it will always start a new transaction. Mandatory means this current method should be running in an existing transaction. If there is no existing transaction, it will throw an exception. Required means a, tra a transaction context should exist, but it will not throw an exception if if uh, there is no transaction context. And supports means it will support transaction context if there is one. Okay, so we'll discuss these in detail in other examples. Okay. So it's very important to understand all these four different transaction, all these different transaction attributes. Okay. And in this file, let's quickly see what this file describes. You first uh, configure the data source in the transaction test.xml. Then you specify the bean for the DAO. And this bean customer DAO basically is a class of JDBC template customer DAO. And it you inject the data source which is defined in the transaction test.xml. So if you look at the transaction test.xml, you'll see the definition of the data source. Okay. So that data source is referred by this ref by this ref uh, XML tag and this is a setter injection and then we are saying that we are using the XML transaction test service and the bean for that is the transaction test service and we are again doing a setter injection for the DAO so if you look at the implementation for the XML transaction test service it has a customer DAO so that is being spring injected and you'll have some setter getters and setters for that so using that we, we spring inject the customer DAO in the transaction test service which provides the implementation for those four methods and the transaction advice is a is the transaction behavior that we are configuring and we attach this transaction advice behavior over to specific met to specific classes so here what we are saying he here is we are defining a point cut which identifies the area of the program where this transaction behavior is attached so what is the area of the program where this transaction behavior is attached that is specified by this expression so here we are saying that for all the classes in XML transaction test service so this dot star means all the methods in this class and they can take any number of arguments so for all the methods in this class which take any number of arguments you are attaching this transaction behavior and that behavior is defined over here so what we are saying is any method which starts with the word find it is a read only method it's not going to change anything in the database and methods which have this name will get these properties so the transaction propagation is requires new and if it ex it receives an expected exception there is no rollback for it it will automatically get committed even if that expected exception is thrown and if any unexpected exception is thrown it will always roll back So this is a spring context XML file and now I'm going to run this program. I'll just make sure that I don't have any any demo, any data already existing in the database. and this is the demo program which tries to call all those four methods the find methods and the three add methods one which is the happy path scenario that is add customer without any without any exception so this will always commit and the next one is add customer that throws expected exception 
in this case an expected exception is thrown but still it gets committed because spring it has been configured to commit the transaction even when the expected exception is thrown and the last one is it you receive an unexpected exception and the transaction should get rolled back so let me run this so you say run as java application and you see that it inserts these three customers uh, the last one should actually it should not it should have rolled back but for some reason it is still committing I need to look into this and to see how to set the auto commit to false so that when there is an exception the transaction gets rolled back and does not get committed I will look into that and let you know in the next class so we'll end this for today